special edition of Gut Belt. I'm Dana Perino, filling in for Greg, who I hear is off hiding Jesse's hairpiece somewhere. <laughs> So today is National Email Day, and some Americans are celebrating by deleting them. <laughs> today is also Spanish Language Day, and to celebrate a confused President Biden is planning to address the nation in French. <laughs> <laughs> Actor Michael Douglas says Joe Biden is, quote, sharp as a tack. Well, here's the tack. <laughs> Streaming service CNN Plus, which operated for exactly one month in 2022, it might be making a comeback. Talk about a twice-baked potato. <laughs> Ilhan Omar's daughter complains she's homeless and broke after getting kicked out of college for her anti-Semitic views. Even worse, now she can't afford to get her uncle a gift for Father's Day. <laughs> According to a new study, many seniors think 75 is the new 65, while others think 150 is a new 120. <laughs> All right, let's get to the monologue. So I saw this over the weekend. Axios reported that during his presidency, Joe Biden has refused to give a single interview to The New York Times, The Washington Post or The Wall Street Journal. And he's the only president in living memory to refuse an interview with The Times. So, what happened to the Biden promise of a return to norms? Normal would be a president who actually talks to his constituents in coherent sentences without needing closed captions. You know things are bad when the best speech the president's given is this one. I have one word. Don't. <laughs> Don't. Not exactly the Gettysburg Address. <laughs> Joe would struggle reciting his mailing address. His speechwriters must have the easiest job on earth. They definitely don't get paid by the word. On the other hand, at least that's a speech he could remember. Meanwhile, the excuses from the White House press often are laughable. Part of the president's job is actually to hold press conferences. But this guy comes to work less than Harold Ford Jr. <laughs> And this was supposed to be the most transparent administration ever, remember? Mr. President, you know, was it something we said, you know, like asking a question? Because the only time Joe Biden seems willing to answer anything is when Marine One is going full blast behind him. <laughs> Do you think if we fit a helicopter in the White House briefing room, though, he might actually hold a press conference? And maybe John Kirby could just stand behind him and make helicopter noises. <laughs> Now, compare this to Donald Trump, who gave us about all the access we could handle. Almost too much. And no reporter ever said, Real, I really wish this uh, Trump guy would stop holding back so much. If Biden has been ghosting us, Trump was stalking us. But at least you knew where he stood. Right out on your front lawn, wanting to talk. <laughs> Remember that one? So where is Joe Biden now, as radicalized college kids with more privilege than brains threaten Jewish students? Shouldn't he take that personally, as he grew up in Jewish temples, as well as black churches, Puerto Rican bodegas, and Chinese laundromats? <laughs> Has the president ever explained what happened in Afghanistan? Now, I realize that's a distant memory to him, but then again, so is today's breakfast. <laughs> Or how, <laughs> or how our intel agencies missed the October 7th attack on Israel? Or why he had no idea his Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, was missing for over a week? Or why his shoes are on the wrong feet? <laughs> Has he ever stood the lectern and explained his energy policy? His plan on fentanyl? His southern border solution? Instead, he blathers about an uncle getting eaten by cannibals when his plane was shot down over Gilligan's Island. <laughs> <laughs> and now a big part of the blame here goes to the committee to re-elect Joe Biden. That's otherwise known as the White House Press Corps. These silly helicopter moments should not be tolerated. The reporter should refuse to ask questions of a U.S. president over the noise of two 5,000 horsepower engines. And when he does take a question or two, he shields himself by saying this. I better not start the questions. I'm in trouble. What's your message? 
The only question he takes seriously is, would you like that in a cup or a cone? <laughs> Sir, I just have a little advice. You are the commander in chief. Tell your press office to pound sand if you really want to talk to reporters. And of course, the rest of the media just plays along. Look at the soft headlines in the New York Times about the campus protests. The fawning how Kamala got her groove back stories. Is really that what Kamala has is a groove? I thought it was nitrous oxide. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just fell out of a coconut tree. <laughs> <laughs> Some people understand what I'm talking about. Heartbeat away, people. Just a heartbeat away. So the White House seems to believe that they just need to show Biden giving a few more fiery speeches. Guys, heads up, that's not working. Because right now, Biden's numbers on health and competency compared to Trump, they're not getting any better. And all this comes as we head into Washington's most ridiculous week, and that is saying something. It's the White House Correspondents' Dinner this weekend, which is supposed to be about good journalism and students winning scholarships, though I'd be suspicious of any awards from Columbia University, especially if it's making a ticking sound. Instead, it's a night of the media fawning all over themselves, but it's the perfect chance for the White House press corps to stand up for itself and demand more from this White House. So, will they do it? Well, if you were going to bet on that happening, as a very mediocre president once said, don't. <laughs> Tonight's guest, as a former cop, he likes to spend his free time frisking himself. Fox News contributor Paul Morrow. You know how she spells Charlie any damn way she wants. Outkick.com host Charlie Arnold is here. When she goes on a rant, she packs a suitcase. New York Times best-selling author and Fox News contributor Kat Tim. His quads have their own agent. His calves do not. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former NWA champ, world champion. All right, guys. So, Paul, we're a little over six months away from the election, and you've got the recent polls saying that, you know, it's kind of neck and neck, but Trump is ahead by a bit in most of the battleground states. Right. Do you think that... It's panic time for the Democrats. And do you think that Biden will debate Trump? I do. I think the optic is so bad if he doesn't. But, you know, the problem with that, as you can see, is the overall strategy is a buffer. Right? It's like that scene in The Godfather when he says, yeah, Senator, it was a lot of buffers. Right. There's a buffer at all times between the leader of the free world and the population. And the reason is because they're afraid if we leave him alone, he's going to start talking about corn pop and cannibals. <laughs> and what the hell is corn? It sounds like a breakfast cereal. Where the hell? I think he must have had that for breakfast when he came into his head. So I don't understand where they think this can go because you can't hide him for another six months. And I, I think at some point here, they're going to have to bite the bolt and they can say, look, you got to sink or swim because the optic is so bad if they continue to hide him. At least one debate. Maybe they just check the box and move on. But I think they got to do at least one. And do you think that they are hedging their bets, Charlie, and trying to get it to a point where they say uh, they, they said it depends. Biden said it depends on how Trump behaves, whether he'll debate him. Yeah, absolutely. He's trying to pin this on Trump rather than his own devices. He knows that he can't stand on his own two feet. Quite literally, he stumbles all over himself all the time. Uh, he knows that he can't go off script if you put it into a debate situation. What's going to happen there? I mean, we can only imagine the comedy that would ensue. So he's trying to pin this on Donald Trump. We'll see how he behaves. Uh, in matter of fact, why would I even want to debate a criminal? Uh, that's the kind of argument he's making right now. It makes absolutely no sense. But I think the best thing his comms team can do, the only thing they have done, frankly, in his favor up to this point, is keep him out of the public eye and not allow him to do any type of one-on-one -on -one interviews yeah. and up to this point not debate Trump. It's interesting, Kat, because I've never seen a poll in a presidential election year on competency. Yeah. Like that was just like sort of a given. But right. now we have these polls on competency. And one way for the White House to show that Joe Biden is fully competent would be to debate. Yeah. And or not. 
<laughs> I, I, I was saying months ago that they were going to try to make the point of, oh, well, you can't normalize Trump in this way. And the excuses don't really make sense. I mean, that Axios, I read that article talking about how he doesn't speak to the media. And a White House official said, OK, well, but his travel schedule is far more demanding than any president. I don't know if that's true, but even if it is, there's like a level of power and prestige where I feel like traveling isn't even hard. Like Air Force One has a bet on it, right? <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm tired. I know you can definitely relate to this. I mean, my tour schedule is really grueling, but the reasons for it don't apply to Joe Biden. Like I'm in Syracuse and Rochester this weekend, not that far from New York City, but I still got to get up really early, take an early flight because there aren't that many options for flights. Uh, otherwise, I get there too late. He gets to pick when the plane lands. He gets, doesn't have to go through. He just doesn't have to they go pack through. For him. They pack for him. There's probably a doctor on there giving whatever yes. IV treatments he wants. He just walks on the plane right into the bed. My, th that's easy. Sounds awesome. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it is pretty incredible, Tyrus, to think. I mean, you're a competitor. You like to get in the ring. Um, Biden says he's like a big fighter. That he would like to go out back and fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, 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 did he go get in the well, ring he, and the debate? Okay, okay Dana. He... Slow. He would a thousand percent debate President Trump and he would wipe the floor with him with anecdotes and epitaphs and clever gotcha moments. But he does not consort with criminals or a coup because that's the new word. Mm. You can't let a guy who's going to go to jail and he's a trying to take away democracy and you're going to give this cad this this upstart cooer a platform to speak to the president absolutely not on my watch as an american citizen no he can't criminals shouldn't be allowed to speak with presidents i have said this for since this whole conversation even started a year ago there will be no debate mm -mm. there yeah. no way and they and they've already laid it out He's a threat to democracy. He's a dictator. He's going to Hillary Clinton, although it was owed to OJ Day, said that he was going to kill his enemies. So they're running this whole thing to where he is. Lex Luthor is running for president. So that's what it's going to be. There is no debate because there can't be one. But OK, so that makes me ask a question, Paul. If the presidential candidates don't debate. Do the vice presidential candidates? Oh debate? my God! Right, because it would be <laughs> Kamala Harris versus some unknown person. What a train wreck! Tim Scott. <laughs> Tim Scott. She could she could debate some unknown person and still lose. Oh my gosh! Listen, you know, think about it for a sec. Think about the substance of this conversation. We're not asking a lot. We're just asking no. for the guy to talk. Right. That's not really a lot. If you want to be president, if you want to be in charge of the nuclear football. Coherent sentences, not that high a bar. Well, it has been, it has been really driving me crazy, and you indulged me all, all of you indulged me a little bit in the monologue. It's dri driving me crazy, Charlie, that the White House press office does not say, Mr. Mr. President, we need you to make some news today on anti-Semitism on campuses. So top your speech with it, or actually maybe take some questions. Have a reporter come in, do an interview. Instead, they just let shouted questions go to him. And then we are, suppo we are supposed to close caption it mm -hmm. so that you can all understand what the president's saying. And then the next thing Corinne Jean-Pierre will say is the president's been perfectly clear. <laughs> Dana, since, since we are in your presence, uh, you did a fantastic job in oh, your thanks. position I was as really press secretary. <laughs> we unfortunately cannot say the same about Green Jean-Pierre. She is god-awful at her job. I just actually had the opportunity to interview Caroline Levitt, Trump's press secretary, the other day. She was mind-blowingly smart. So just on top of it, in the contrast, just blew me away. Uh, but also what blows me away is the contrast of just how the candidates are addressing their constituents. So you saw Trump go into a fast food restaurant, yeah. everybody coming up to him. He's giving them hugs, high fives. He was all about it. And then you see Biden walk into a restaurant and his team is saying, everybody get back. Don't come anywhere I near. I, I mean, don't think there just... are a lot of people there. And also if his yeah, campaign right. probably only can't three. fill a Wawa <laughs> with people that can support Biden, they've got bigger problems. After the show, I'm going to ask you and Kat to tell me what grade you were in Ooh. when I was press secretary. <laughs> I'm surprised you were watching. All right. Up next, Baldwin stands his ground against an anti-Israel hound.
Israel hack goes on the attack against a Democrat flag. Our video of the day comes to us from a podcast host reportedly known for her ambush interviews who harassed Alec Baldwin inside a New York coffee shop and demanded he repeat the phrase free Palestine. Watch here. Alec, can you please say free Palestine one time? Why did you kill that lady? You killed that lady and got no jail time? No jail time, Alec? Sorry. No jail time, Alec. You're putting innocent people in jail, Alec Baldwin. I'm so sorry. Free Palestine, Alec, just one time, and I'll leave you alone. I'll leave you alone, I swear. Just say free Palestine yeah. one time. Yeah. One time. One time. Call the police. One time, you Alec. Arrested. You know, he, you know he's a criminal. You know he's a f***ing criminal. Come on, Alec, just say free Palestine one time. One time, just one time, please, and I'll leave you alone. Free Palestine. Israel, Zionism. Please say it. One time. Could you give me one quick favor? Yeah. Understandably, Alec was confused because usually when activists say no more bombs, they're protesting his upcoming films. But having said that, Charlie, the, the person who shot the video posts under the account Crackhead Barney and Friends and called Alec a, quote, white devil on Twitter or X. So Crackhead Barney, uh, is it supposed to take her seriously? Absolutely not. And this is one of those, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes type of thing. The fact that I learned after the fact she goes by the moniker Crackhead Barney only adds another layer to all of the ridiculousness. Quite frankly, I was impressed by how much patience and poise that Alec Baldwin asserted in that moment. Yeah. I was watching this video. I was getting infuriated. I was wanting to grab the phone out of that girl's hand myself. And, you know, for someone who has anger management issues... To get on the internet and see everybody on the side of Alec Baldwin for once, yeah, it was pretty shocking. Yeah. But this girl was completely out of line, and I think anybody, no matter the circumstance, if you are harassed like that, something should be done about it. And I, I commend him for doing what he did at the end of the day. Yeah, crackhead Barney Cat, <laughs> she made Alec Baldwin sympathetic. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> right? Because she kept going with it, kept going with it. I think it doesn't help anyone when you shout people down. Say this thing. Say this thing I'm telling you to say when he's just going about his day, living his life. Uh, the right call in those situations for anyone, I think, is to not, just not say anything, just to pretend they're not there. Except I think there's be one thing he could have said that would have been really funny is if he would have just said, don't talk to me till I've had my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then that coffee shop would have been like at, with customers out the door. Yeah, that would have been like the little meme. Like that would have been actually kind of funny. But I'd like to think I would have thought of that if people were shouting me down in a coffee shop. But... Uh, Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I would have been too stressed. But. Tyrus, what would you have done? Uh, he, well, if, since you brought up The Godfather, there's a great scene with Sonny in the media. I'd probably handle it like that. Um, <laughs> you knock the phone out of it, and then the phone would meet the bottom of my shoe, which, by the way, uh -huh. how dare you talk about my calves, okay? And, uh, <laughs> They're not that big. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen Well, you can't see them because i got to wear six cushions to sit in a chair without disappearing. <laughs> oh. But, uh, <laughs> So you counted how many just like I did. Okay, cool. <laughs> Boo me. I'm not Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Listen, when somebody, and here's the part, this is how you can tell journalism is dead, okay? She's obviously, the individual who's doing this was ignorant. When someone's not answering your question, first, the dumbest question is, do you support Palestine? Telling them they committed murder is always a good way to get somebody to be like, well, now that you put it that way, have a seat. <laughs> you know, you want to talk about anything else? My wife leaving me for a younger man. Like, I haven't spoke to my children in five years. Let's just get into me, and I'll say your little thing. Like, the, 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 the amount of ignorance that we're seeing and the fact that we have to talk about it, and even saying the name crackhead Barney. Barney, Big Bird, or what? No, don't, because <laughs> people don't are going to look it up. Yeah. Yeah, they are. People are going to look it up, and they're going to see this moron and how they continue to do this stuff. When someone's attacking like that and getting in your face, he knocked the phone out of her hand, but he didn't take it to the next step. You got to take the phone, you got to break it in half, and you got to go about your day. And then you do, and I'm not condoning it, and then you do what Sonny did. Throw a couple dollars on the ground, <laughs> look them up and down, and walk off. That's what I would have done. Well, so he was saying to call the cops. What would have happened if the cops were called? Look, they would have ejected her. But, you know, all I could think of watching this is... Think about, let's review the bidding here. You have a peak, obnoxious Gaza protester 
harassing Alec Baldwin in a boutique coffee shop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the New Donald York. Trump jury pool, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because yeah. that's what he's up against right there. Baldwin would be the most favorable. That's how bad it is. Now, obviously, look, she's trying to push his buttons, and she was looking for a reaction, and he did at least hit the camera, maybe her, I don't know. So there's going to be a lawsuit here. She's getting what she so wanted. in a situation yeah. like that, can she sue him? She's going to sue him. We all know that. And all I can say is when they settle, if he offers you a job on his next movie, don't take it. <laughs> Good advice, as always. And, Kat, the other thing about this is, too, um, so his wife, who is a, a character mm. unto herself. I mean, mm -hmm. when you see your husband like that out and about in the wild, just like, as you said, going about his day, being attacked, you, would, you might want to go after her yourself. Yeah, I might, but I also, she's very busy pretending to be a Spanish lady. Yes. <laughs> si. si me gusta. To be a fly on the wall no of that house, it. man. I mean, what happens in there? It is a wild house. Maybe we'll get crackhead blue, big bird, you'd say, yeah, uh, to get us a camera look inside there. But hopefully they never meet again. That's what we hope. All right, up next, how women that men desire turn other ladies into liars. Tonight on Should We Be Concerned, hot chicks get honest men inspired but turn women into liars. This is according to a new study that finds attractive women inspire men to tell the truth and women to lie, which might make you ask, is she just making that up? <laughs> no, not. 220 men and women were given questionnaires. Photos of attractive and less attractive female scientists were attached with participants under the impression that the women in the photos were the ones asking the questions. Turns out women answered more dishonestly and men more honestly when they thought a pretty woman was asking them the questions. Which I guess explains why Greg has never lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Kidding, kidding. Um, Charlie, does this prove once and for all that men are suckers and manipulated by a pretty face? I think there are enough men out there that we could consider to be suckers. Not all of them. Uh, however, I did learn my lesson the other day because oh. generally speaking, I like to make a habit of looking as you know, rough as possible when I'm not at work. You know, no makeup. Hair I'm finding messy, this hard to believe, but no, okay. No, please, because you know we have to look nice for our job. So the last thing we want to do, we do? <laughs> as women, we do. <laughs> but I went to Chipotle right after work the other day. Full hair, full makeup done, and I got double meat for free. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm on to something. Maybe I should get glammed up every time I leave the house now, right? In this economy. Double meat is a, is a big <laughs> it, it deal. It a lot. But I mean, when it's all said and done, if, if someone has a nasty attitude, it really doesn't matter what they look like. And I think people are just learning to see all through that type of thing because especially with social media, everybody has a pretty face now, right? Filters are on absolutely everybody. Uh, everybody's a catfish. So I think we've all kind of gotten past the, the looks department, I think, in a way. I've worked with Gutfeld long enough, Paul, yeah. to, to know that he hates these studies, right? He thinks that we all fall for them because they're PR stunts. Do you buy this? Uh, let's, let me play his role here a little bit. So the comeuppance of this whole thing is that men want to tell good-looking women what they think good-looking women want to hear. Mm. Wow. What science. <laughs> oh. What I want to know is this. According to that study, right, they compared a good-looking woman to a less attractive woman and the effect it had. How did they advertise for the less attractive woman? Yes. <laughs> And who answered that ad? <laughs> That's kind of rough. Talk about a cattle call. Yes, you got an answer for that? Well, I was gonna you say, got an answer for that? I was say, if you were for okay. ugly woman, please I got, apply. I got an answer for that. They were asked to do it by a woman. Probably. <laughs> Said, oh, you're beautiful. Come do this questionnaire. <laughs> because we learned. No, what? Everyone's being quiet because this crowd has a lot of women in it. Because <laughs> you guys all lie to each other. You could run an experiment, like you will ask them, is Lizzo pretty? They'll say yes, and they go, good, you look like Lizzo. <gasps> How dare you? Because you guys are filthy liars. This is what this whole thing, men tell the truth. They'll say a pretty woman will ask them a question, they'll answer it. An ugly woman asks them a question, he'll still answer it. It's just not saying it, said with the same vigor. It's usually said, shh, why are you talking to me during daylight? 
<laughs> so do, do you think Lizzo's pretty? Do I think Lizzo's pretty? No, I don't, okay. because I'm a man. And I'll tell you the truth. That's this whole thing I'm just showed. I'm a woman, showed. and I also don't think she's pretty. Who's yeah, but if she was in the room and you guys were talking, you'd be like, oh, my God, you look so good in that outfit, the way you stretched the it thing out. Is, there is it's something beautiful, here. Uh, the way you did it. Like, and then she'll leave and try to look at me and like, damn. Wow. But that's what women do. Tyrus Man, we is keep it real. getting inside the head of a woman. I no, guess. the only one or two. I well, can't. That's. A, I'm not taking that roller coaster. No, thank you. <laughs> I I was just a little disappointed, Paul, when you said you were going to take the role of Gutfeld. Cause I don't. I feel like if he were here, actually, what he would have said, he would have never let you get away with saying the phrase "double meat for free." Yes. <laughs> I was trying not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the, that, that would have yeah. been the first thing that he said. And also, Paul, I my head was went to the same place as yours though in terms of like how do they recruit this for them? I'm not sure I, how I feel about. I that. think that what they did was just not tell them what it was for. They they explained the study, but I don't think they then called them later. Like just so you know, you were on Team Uggo. Like <laughs> we use your picture as an example of an ugly woman. I think they probably just. You know, it was up for the woman to decide whether she was on the hot team or the uggo team. Do you think it's changed, Charlie, with um, online dating as people swipe left? Like, they make people make judgments so quickly. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah, I, I think absolutely the first intuition is to swipe right because that's the way you go when you But you I don't like understand. Somebody. When you swipe right, is that this way or that it's way? It's this way. So you're... Anybody else confused? Your finger going to the right. I know you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if you're not attracted to someone, I think... Right off the bat, even if you're like, oh, this person has an interesting profile. We have a lot of similarities, hobbies, you know, same interests. If you're not into them, the way they look, swipe you're right. Gonna, you're going to swipe left. Oh, left. Okay. Yeah. So, no, people, I mean, we still live in a very superficial society. But I think ultimately, I just trying to deal with someone who just has nothing there underneath a pretty face is just impossible to do. I think both men and women can agree on that. I mean, nobody here has that problem. No. But to be clear, we are establishing that the women are the liars. Because also, <laughs> to that point, to your point, the, the, the fancy was filters, Wait, no, would, and the fake no, hair, would, and the boobs, and the teeth. I would always, and then when you have your first child, and the child comes out, and you're like, what the? <laughs> I would you always, lied to me. When I was dating, I would always schedule the first few dates after I had like full full glam from work, and then one day just a different girl shows up. <laughs> but it's still and me. That, it, you already have. You got him at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And then you would know. And then Cam was like, "She's my girl." Oh yeah, he's the best. He I, is I love crowd you, Cam. favorite. Cam, we all love you. You're the best indeed. But to be clear, <laughs> well, you know what. You made it very clear. All right, coming up, their brand's downfall was the dying shopping mall. A story in five words. All right, our story in five words is express stores file for bankruptcy. Kat, I'm going to go to you because... I used to, I, I don't know how much you used to go to the mall, but that was our entertainment. We would go to the mall, and Express was just one of the stores that especially my sister loved to go to. Oh, yeah. No, I, I used to love to go to the mall. I mean, Express, I feel like, was a little over my budget, so I would go to, uh, like, Wet Seal. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> wet, wet Seal, but mostly I would actually go to, like, Kohl's for my yep. clothes. And I remember I would go to Abercrombie and walk around the store to try to get hired because they hired people there <laughs> because I really wanted the discount, but I needed the discount to afford the clothes. So, like, in retrospect, I get why they weren't, like, you know what, this, like, little creep just loitering around the store in her Kohl's clothes. Not going to hire her, you know? Like, they don't accept Kohl's cash there. Is it sad to you that Express is going away? It's like an end of an era. Yeah, I mean, going... It, it is an end of an era. I mean, going to the mall, I mean, I, that, that was what you do, you know? Like one of the best stores at the mall, Paul, was Spencer's Gifts. Did oh, you have God, that? I remember that. Yeah, yeah. They were, like, begging to be shoplifted. I remember that. That's the whole thing. They had <laughs> always, a cop, always, always a little cop. trinkets and stuff. Yeah, I remember those. God. You know, the interesting thing to me about this story is if you read down into like the last paragraph, they're about to get almost $50 million in COVID stimmy on their deathbed. Only the U.S. government would give a store that's going bankrupt $50 million as it goes out of the picture. But that is what's happening. And, you know, I feel like it's emblematic kind of of all the malls across America. They're all becoming empty. They're becoming ghost villages, you know. And it, I think in a larger sense, like, 
It is part of the lack of social uh, socialization that kids have these days. Because as you said, it it became like a town square. You would have to meet at the mall. You couldn't meet online. Right. And so it's more isolating. And it's realistically Bezos' fault. (laughs) Right? He's got to solve this one. Because we got all these empty stores. Amazon killed them. And kids can also order whatever they want into their homes. You know what I mean? So it actually is a serious problem. I think that you have all of these stores. There are businesses actually that are looking at trying to figure out what to do with them. But like in the same way that China has all these ghost cities, we have ghost malls all over the country. Yeah, one of the things they've done, Charlie, is there are some entrepreneurs who have figured out a way to take like the empty Bed Bath & Beyond store, because that went out of business as well, and they put a pickleball court in there. Yeah. I mean, is is that genius? It is genius, actually, because pickleball is blowing up. People want to play pickleball. People don't want to shop anymore at, you know, big, massive malls. And people just don't see it as appealing as they used to. And it's so crazy because when I was young, we would just we wouldn't even go to the mall to shop. We would strictly go there to hang out with each other. And you would like see your crush across the mall. and You'd be like, oh, my goodness, there he is. You know, it was just it was one of the things you would do for fun. Your parents would drop you off. They would leave you with their cell phone and they would say, call me when you're done. Yeah, we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> we got left and it was like, be back here at four o'clock. Yeah. And Express was just, I, I loved Express. I mean, I had a, I had the best outfit from Express when I was in sixth grade. It was these <laughs> massive orange parachute pants and this really soft army green top. And I thought I was just the coolest person in the world when I wore this outfit. Now I look back and I was the uncoolest. I think back to, I bought Peter some sweaters from Express only maybe about 15 years ago. I just bought a they sweater from Express. Forever. Like maybe Well, so we are in ago. mourning about Express. Um, did you ever shop there, Tyrus? <laughs> 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 Like glitter for my shoelaces? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 26 inch neck. That's going to go real well at Express. No, uh, I missed the Express train. Uh, Sorry. But did you like to go to the mall? Uh, KB Toys was my favorite place. You just went to the mall. Yeah, that was cool. KB Toys, rest in peace. no. But what was the best mall food? Like Orange Julius? Yeah. No, usually food from lesser... Panda Express. Lesser sub-male adults who had money uh, would I'd take their food. So whatever they were eating. Like, what is that, dog? Like, that's right. I was that bully in the mall with my crew. Uh, because we couldn't fit anything at Express. So we were all big, giant, angry guys. We couldn't get away with too much because if we came early in the morning, all the old people doing laps, they kind of controlled things. So what the mall is becoming today is it's a place where you'll see trampoline parks or buildings, pickleball, racetracks for the little old people to walk their laps. So it has to be something you're doing, axe throwing. Doggy like it has daycare. To be doggy daycare. So they're turning into basically activity centers. Because you know the of, other thing they have there is like cars. Yeah. Right? Like you Why? can go in there. It's like a car showroom. Why do they have cars? Because cars, people will come see a car. And then you'll think, I want that car. Yes. They have cars in the mall? In the mall. Yeah, right next to Express. We don't. They, <laughs> <laughs> but like, the, yeah, that, that Lucent car, like was one of them, Tesla. Like they'll go there. It's sort of like basically you can go there, you can look around and say, oh, my, I might want that in the future. And they don't. I mean, they have jumping things you can put your kids in so they can jump around for a while. And it's I like it's becoming an activity. I don't shop in person anymore. All of my shops buy everything online. online. I have boxes and boxes just stacked up in my apartment. I got to ship them back. Sometimes I miss the return window and then it drives me nuts. It's and I'm like, so oh my gosh, the daunting. money. It the return? Like, to go, yeah. Wow. The return yeah, but you know, hard. it's true. The malls now, now that I think about it, because we have one here on the west side of Manhattan, Hudson Yards. And realistically, now it, the whole thing's a showroom. Nobody That's buys right. anything. If you so you go around, there and also you take a picture of it and then you go and home you and you try to online. buy it for less expensive yeah. Yeah, exactly. places. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's what you do. Yeah, true. Google Shop. Oh, the <laughs> mall. We loved you back when. All right, up next, a segment that orders our guests to be reporters. to coast with stories that matter most you're watching local news with emmy winning anchor kelly crystal kelly replacing chet van jansen who died and now here's kelly hi hello i am kelly crystal kelly and this is local news where every guest has to share a story from wherever they're from all right, Charlie, why don't, why don't you go first? Okay, well, I am from Indianapolis, and there are some serious road rage problems happening there on the local roads. There's a woman named Sheila Pride. She is in a whole lot of trouble facing up to six years in prison because 
She had a road rage incident in which she flashed a handgun multiple times, started tailgating another woman who ended up being pregnant, having kids in the car. Then to make matters worse, she started getting even more violent, sideswiping the woman's car, and then simultaneously throwing a container of spaghetti into the woman's car, causing it to spill all over her. Oh, boy. First thing that comes to my mind, you've got a handgun and spaghetti in your car. Yeah. You are definitely in the mob. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I want to hear her side. I want to hear it, too. <laughs> Just curious, honestly. All right, Paul? Okay. According to, I don't know where this is from, actually, but uh, today at JFK, a Swiss Air jet nearly crashed into four other planes <laughs> on the tarmac until at the last second they were waved off. The pilot said, we are rejecting takeoff, traffic on the runway. This comes after a near collision at JFK, blah, 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 took place in Washington, D.C.'s Reagan's airport just yesterday. So this is apparently an ongoing trend here in America, near misses on a tarmac. And all I can say is, I'm really impressed by the incisive commentary of our Secretary of Transportation, Pete <laughs> Buttigieg. Do we have that clip? I know we don't, because he hasn't responded. <laughs> he hasn't said anything. <laughs> And this is what happens when you have DEI hires. It's not because he's gay. Nobody cares about that. But the thing is with DEI hires is they check a box and then they check out because they know they got cover. Where is he? We won't hear. Also, DEI hires have become a big part of hiring for pilots as well, which is why we're seeing a lot of near accidents happening. That's all the time reassuring. Now. Very reassuring. And the road rage continues. <laughs> Tyrus? Thank you. In other news, troubling times in New Orleans. I can't tell if they love New Orleans or hate New Orleans. Sicko, like troubling times, then cheer. Yeah. Let me finish the story. You'll really be excited. <laughs> be on high alert, New Orleans. This is the time of year when the dreaded buckmouth caterpillars fall from live oak trees. There is four stinging caterpillars terrorizing New Orleans. It's crazy. It's like a Godzilla movie without any coolness in it. Ooh. Okay, why does this matter, you ask? Great question, weird lady in the crowd who clapped. <laughs> Their stings are incredibly painful. Four venomous caterpillars are common in New Orleans, and uh, we should be used to them. Look out for but one in particular is the most dangerous. It's called the uh, puss mouth caterpillar. <laughs> also called an ass, but let's be frank, we're all going to call it puss mouth caterpillar. It is the most venomous of the bunch. Uh, if you were to step on it or be seen with it or get it, to touch it, the stingers get in your finger, and then for nine months, you have to wait for it to come out. Uh, then you are financially responsible for the offspring for the rest of your life. So everything you can do, please stay away from the puss moth caterpillar. Uh, I was stung at least four times. Uh, live oak. Tussauds moth caterpillars aren't venomous, and they go underground. But the good news is it's three weeks of watching where you step, and they all go underground. And, and there's a picture of one right there. So it's pretty, but don't, don't touch, touch it. Okay. Okay. Well, Dana? Well, I had to choose one that um, Greg would be proud of that okay. I chose. Okay. So this is happening in Poudre Valley in Colorado. And a library book in Colorado was recently re received back to the library after 100 years. It had been checked out 100 years ago. <gasps> They never returned it. The fines for this kind of an outrageous crime was it would be seven hundred and sixty dollars was a late fee in 1919. In today's dollars, it's fourteen thousand dollars when adjusted for inflation. They are just glad to have the book back. They're not going to make anyone pay. Anyone guess the guess the book? What book? Potty training for short people. Ivanhoe by. Sir Walter Scott. Oh, yeah. Walter. Yeah, Sir Walter Scott. Never read it. Yeah, but well, I might you have to. It's been but I might have to now. <laughs> 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 All right, don't go away. We'll be right back. Fox News Channel.